Hello. Hi, Jack. This is your tenant, Erica. Oh yeah? What's the problem? I'm calling because we have a problem with our sink. It's clogged. Remember I told you the sink is not a garbage can. You can't just throw food scraps down it. It's not the kitchen sink, it's the bathroom sink. Oh, uh, you girls and your hair. Always clogging my sinks. Well, I wanted to bring it to your attention. Listen, I'm in Florida right now. I can't come over and look at it right now. Maybe next week. Hi, welcome to Breathe English. I'm your host, Erica. And today we are talking about how to rent an apartment and talk to your landlord in English. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and thank you. So you've looked for a place to rent online or just by walking around and seeing for rent signs in front of the houses or apartments. You can call or email and ask to come see the place or to have a tour. So you set up a time to check out the rental. When you go to check out the apartment or the house, there are some things you should look for. Check that the water temperature and pressure are good. Temperature, how hot and cold, and the pressure is how strong the water comes out. So if it's low pressure, just a little water comes out, you don't want that. Cell phone reception. Cell phone reception. You certainly don't want to move into a place that is in a dead zone or for some reason you cannot get cell phone reception. Also check that the appliances are working. Ask about the washing machine if there is one. Take a look at the furnace. Peek inside the refrigerator and the freezer. Make sure it's cold and not disgusting. Okay, and this can be hard to do on a tour, but check for pests like mice, or ants or cockroaches. You can peek and check for holes or cracks in the baseboards. You can also feel, this is gross, but you can feel on top of the refrigerator for any droppings or poop. And then you wanna ask about the parking situation. You can just say, what is the parking situation? Do you have a garage? Is there a parking space that comes with the apartment? or is it just street parking? Also ask which utilities you will be responsible for. Utilities include electricity, water, garbage, recycling, internet. So in thinking of your monthly budget, how much you will spend on your living space, don't forget to factor in utilities. So if you're planning to spend $1,000 total, you might want a place that's $900, so you have about 100 to factor in for utilities. Also ask if pets are allowed. If you are a pet owner, this is one of the first things you should ask. Sometimes pets are allowed, but you have to have an extra like pet lease or pet contract. If you don't have pets, also good to know if you're in an apartment building, you know, what are the rules? Are people allowed to have dogs, cats? And if you're allergic, it's good to know if the previous renter had animals. Okay, so let's say you tour the place, you love it, you wanna move there. The landlord will probably ask for a referral from a previous landlord. Let's back up and talk about the terms. A landlord is the owner of a property. It might be an apartment, condo, house, townhouse, they own the property and they rent it out. Landlord is the term for a male and landlady is the term for female. If you're renting a place, you are a renter or a tenant. It means the same thing. Okay, so hopefully your last place you lived in, you were a good tenant and it's easy to get a referral from that landlord. You can offer their name and their phone number so your new landlord can call them and say, hey, was Erica a good tenant? I'm thinking of renting to her. Okay, and if everything goes smoothly, you will sign a contract or sign a lease. The most common is a year lease. So if I sign it September 1st, then the next year, August 31st, the lease will be finished. The lease will be up. You can also get a six month lease, not as common, and sometimes month to month. So that means you just, you stay every month 
if you decide to leave, you're not breaking any lease. It's month to month. So when you sign the contract, you will need to pay the first month's rent plus a security deposit, which is usually equal to one month's rent. So if your rent is $600 per month, you will pay $600 for the first month of rent and then another $600 for the security deposit. And that money the landlord holds onto until you move out of the property. And if you have damaged anything in the apartment or the house, they can take money out of that security deposit to fix those broken items. You can move into your new place on the first day of your lease. If your lease starts June 1st, you can move in June 1st. You will have the keys from your landlord. When you move in, take pictures of everything, especially if you notice anything damaged, broken, scratched. And if you notice any problems, you should tell your landlord right away so they do not think it was your fault and end up charging you. Okay, and then you'll probably arrange your furniture, unpack, meet your neighbors, get used to the new noises of the house in the neighborhood. Most people pay rent the first day of every month, but that's not always the case. It's a good idea to automate your payments. If you're able to do this with your bank, just automatically deposit money to your landlord. Mm. Another note about landlords, landladies, sometimes you will interact with an apartment manager or a property manager. Sometimes this is one person or a company who takes care of maybe the rent payments, any problems you have, complaints. Um, that's a manager, but they're not the owner of the property. So the owner, the landlord, they can hire these managers to do all of the typical landlord jobs. Sooner or later, you are sure to encounter some problems at the place you live. This is normal. Hopefully not too many problems. The last place I lived one summer, the basement flooded three times for three different reasons. One was a thunderstorm, too much rain at once. One was the washing machine overflowed. <laughs> and the third time it was the water heater broke. <sighs> My poor landlord. So landlords can vary in how responsive they are to complaints from their tenants. If someone is responsive, they are quick to get back to you. You call them, they answer or they call you back quickly. Unresponsive is the opposite. So you call them, text them, no answer for several days. Other words are absent, hard to get a hold of, hard to get a hold of. That just means you might call the person, text the person, leave messages, and it's like they're a ghost. <laughs> they don't get back to you. Some phrases to express that there's a problem. I'm calling to let you know there's a problem with the water heater, with the furnace. I noticed a wasp nest on the side of the house. Or you could just state the problem. We have a leaky faucet. And also explain when you noticed the problem and if you have tried anything to fix it. Yeah, the heater hasn't worked since yesterday. I tried turning it off and on, but it's still not working. Yeah, the garbage disposal stopped working last Monday. I tried pulling the food scraps out, but it's still broken. So give the landlord all the information you have, how long it was broken, things you've noticed, if you've tried anything. So they will need to come to fix it themselves or hire a third party. A third party is someone who's not the two people directly involved, not the landlord, not the renter, but someone else. So a third party could be a plumber, an electrician, a handyman, carpenter, painter, or company. So your landlord is gonna pay for the third party to come and fix the problem. Some things to know, landlords have some legal responsibilities. First of all, they cannot just walk into your place. They cannot just walk into your apartment or your house. Uh, they have to let you know. Landlords are also legally responsible to keep the apartment or the house up to code, safety and health codes. So they must remove mold, they must exterminate pests, 
The heating and the cooling must work. Structural integrity of the building must be safe. Windows cannot be broken. Walls can't be cracked. Foundation can't be unsteady or holes in the floors. Anything that would make the place unsafe. If the problem with the space makes it uninhabitable, meaning it's impossible to live there, most places the landlord has 24 hours to respond and fix the problem. So if it's the middle of winter, it's freezing out and your furnace breaks, you have no heating, that would make your living situation uninhabitable and the landlord's responsible to respond within 24 hours. For more minor problems, say like a sink is clogged, usually the law is 48 hours. They have 48 hours to respond. Okay, so you tell the landlord the problem and they might respond in a few ways. They could say, I'll be right over. I'll be right over. That means I'm coming now. I'm coming to your apartment now. Or I'm sending over a technician or a plumber or an electrician. I'm sending over someone to fix it. Or I can come look at it tomorrow. And they may say, thanks for bringing it to my attention. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. This is just a fancy way of saying, thank you for telling me. Hello. Hi, I'm a tenant in unit number 38. Yeah, which building are you in? Uh, 33 Pearl Street. Yeah, okay, what's the problem? Yes, the furnace is not working. Hmm, that's not good. I'll send a technician over there this afternoon. Also, I've been meaning to tell you about the toilet. Yeah, it keeps getting clogged. Oh, really? How long has this been a problem? For about a week. We tried a few things, but it's still broken. I can have a plumber in on Friday. Does that work for you? Uh, Friday. Do I have to be home? No, I can let him in if you can't be there. Thanks. Also, while I have you on the phone, I keep meaning to ask you about the rent. Will there be an increase when I renew my lease? Yes, the rent increase will be 2%. The utilities will stay the same. Okay, that's reasonable. Thanks for looking into these problems. Thanks for bringing them to my attention. Yep, take care. Bye-bye. So there will come a time when you need to move, leave your apartment or your house that you're renting. So when your lease is finishing, like maybe I signed it last year, March 1st, and now it is February, so my lease is almost up. My lease will be up February 28th. So if your lease is up, it just means the time is finishing. Probably a month or two before your lease is up, you will communicate with your landlord. You will either renew your lease, so you sign the lease for another year, and you'll need to know, is it gonna be the same amount of rent every month, or will there be a rent increase? If you're planning to leave at the end of your lease, you need to tell your landlord well in advance so as soon as you know you are not going to continue living there after your lease is up, you can let your landlord know so that they can be looking for a new tenant. Okay, and then if you need to leave your apartment or your house you're renting before the lease is up, that is called breaking your lease. You break your lease, like whoosh, break. And there's lots of reasons for this. Um, it's best to explain the situation to your landlord. Sometimes you can sublet to another renter so you can find someone, say um, you have six more months of your lease and you need to go. You can try to sublet your apartment to someone for those six months so they take over your lease. Okay, and when it's time to go, make arrangements with your landlord to return the keys and gather your deposit. Remember that security deposit you paid when you moved in. So they will look at everything, make sure you haven't damaged anything. If they need to fix something that was your fault, they'll spend some of that security deposit. But hopefully you can get all or most of it back. And then you move out. 
and you are off to either your next apartment, your next house, whatever your next adventure is. I hope this video helped you understand how to rent a place and talk to your landlord in English. Let me know in the comments any stories you have working with landlords or problems you've had with apartments. I'm Erica, this is Breathe English, and we'll see you next time. Bye.